When we colour in our language now by adding adjectives, we don't really practice adjective endings. We practice all endings of words belonging to the noun. As a matter of fact, this is the end of the endings chapter in the noun part of the grammar. There's nothing more to learn after this, really, and isn't that great? So while we practice the use of adjectives, we simultaneously review everything we've learned around the noun. Needless to say, the following learning games are therefore extremely useful. Adjectives are also a topic where it's very simple for you to make up your own activities. Use anything we've done so far in terms of games or exercises, and creatively build adjectives into it. Thus, add a bit of colour to your language learning. Let's start by doing exactly what I suggested. We'll take two old games and adapt them by adding an adjective component. Thus, we'll repeat some previous grammar and practice adjective endings at the same time. Zehn kleine Unterschiede. Here are the basic instructions again. I wonder how well you remember the zehn kleine Unterschiede. Below, you see two pairs of photos. In each pair, there are ten small differences between the two pictures. Your task is to first find these differences, and then to form German sentences describing them with location prepositions. Try to keep it simple using words and structures you know, and the verbs you remember from the two-way prepositions chapter: liegen, stehen, stecken, hängen. What's new now is that you reword your descriptions by adding adjectives to the nouns wherever you can and wherever it makes sense. If anything, it should make it easier to describe the ten differences. You can either do it all yourself or use the sentence list we added, where there are just the adjective endings missing. And for the solutions, you can consult the digital booklet. Use the pause button on your player to freeze the photos until you've finished the game. If you've got a friend with you, do it as a competition, or alternatively, the two of you take on one pair of photos each and then communicate the differences to each other in German. Viel Glück. Welche Unordnung? What a mess! The new element we're incorporating into this game is to simply add an adjective in front of every noun. That would be a bit over the top in real language use, but what the heck? Let's be extra colourful for practice's sake. Here are the original instructions again, just in case you've forgotten. Does your house or room get messy sometimes, and to the point where you just have to tidy up? Well, mine does, and I'll give you a small insight into the state that it's currently in. In return, you have to clear up the mess for me, and then do it to your own room as well. I'll tell you where my things go in English, and you tell me where you put them in German, and in such a way that I'll find them again. Okay? Use the specialized German to put verbs, and consult the digital booklet, but only if you get desperate. Look out for the verb stecken to put something into a confined space or in between something else. There are two instances where you can use stecken in the sentences below. Afterwards, you can continue with your own mess. Let's hope you have one, and write down in German where you're putting your things. Well, please get on with the job now. I'm waiting. Use the mouse and pause button to toggle backwards and forwards from the photo to the text. If you want to use the prepared sentence list on your screen, note that the stars indicate where an adjective has to be added. I spy with my little eye. This is a variation of a game you probably played in the family car driving to your summer holiday destination. Memories. Well, we have to adapt the game slightly to make it work for us. And to prevent wording our clues in statements like "es ist rot" und "rund," because these adjectives are used in a predicate position, and so they don't have endings. Therefore, I'd like you to word your clues in an adjective-noun combination. As a matter of fact, you're only allowed to use such combinations as part of the rules of the game. As you might be playing this with your study buddy over the net, one of you actually won't see the object in question. So what's left of the original game? Here are the new rules. Both of you choose a relatively easily identifiable object from your immediate surroundings. You could restrict it to your bedroom or kitchen. If you don't know the word for the thing you spy in German, look it up. One of you starts by asking questions according to the following fixed pattern: Ist dein Dingsbums rund? 
Dingsbums, thingamajig, is a nonsensical word without a fixed gender, so that you can adjust articles and adjectives to the gender of the object you choose. So the answer might be, ja, ich habe eine runde Dingsbums, or, ja, ich habe einen runden Dingsbums. And a bonus. German makes the thing easier to guess because right from the start you'll know the gender of the object from the endings of the determiners in front of the noun. Your partner can ask until he, she gets a no, and then it's your turn to ask until you get a no, and so on. Wait with your guess until you're fairly sure, because a wrong guess means that you've lost that round. But of course, if your partner guesses first, you lose as well. Your guess can be in English, but make sure that you then learn the word in German from your partner who looked it up. You might also have to look up a few adjectives and pass that knowledge on to your partner. But that's what it's all about, isn't it? To give you a bit of a head start, here are a few useful adjectives which you'll be able to use for the next game as well. As always, you can also print them out from the digital booklet. Lang, kurz. Long, short. Schmal, breit. Narrow, wide or broad. Alt, neu. Old, new. Dick, dünn. Thick, thin. Hoch, niedrig. High, low. Schwer, leicht. Heavy, light. Groß, klein. Big or tall, small. Weich, hart. Soft, hard. Billig, teuer. Cheap, expensive. Rund, viereckig. Round, angular or square. Spitz, stumpf. Pointy, blunt. Glatt. Rau. Smooth, rough. Kalt, warm, heiß. Cold, warm, hot. Dunkel, hell. Dark, light. Dunkelrot, hellrot. Dark red, light red. And you can use dunkel and hell in front of all color adjectives. Durchsichtig. Transparent. Rosa. Pink. Grau. Grey. Bunt. Colorful. You can also use words like Relativ. Sehr. Extrem. Teilweise. Partly. To further qualify qualities. So, if I suspect, for example, that your object is a sponge and you just said that it is soft, I might next ask, Ist dein Dingsbums sehr weich? And you would answer, Ja, ich habe einen sehr weichen Dingsbums. You would say einen weichen because sponge is masculine, der Schwamm. Or if I asked you, Ist dein Dingsbums weich? And your object is a bed, you would answer. Ja, ich habe ein teilweise weiches Dingsbums. And in this case, the adjective ending weiches is referring to the neuter, das Bett. To make it a bit easier and more interesting, you both get two additional ask your friend questions. That is, yes or no questions you can put to your partner at any time about his or her object. You can ask them in English to give you a new direction for your search. Examples might be, Is your dingsbums a piece of furniture? Or, Is your dingsbums made of metal? Hone your instincts. This is simply about practicing as much as possible with lots of variations. Write the adjectives from the last game and any others you know or want to learn on cards. Then also write incomplete sentences on the cards like the following. Ich sehe, mir gehören. Followed by a plural. Ich arbeite mit. Ich habe kein. Das ist die Farbe mein. Das ist ein. 
Ich stehe auf. Ich liege auf. Ich sitze auf. Now take a sentence and an adjective card and try to complete the sentence choosing an object that fits the adjective. So if you get the cards ich sehe and schmal, you could say Ich sehe das schmale Haus. If you get the cards das ist die Farbe mein and alt, you could say Das ist die Farbe meines alten Pullovers. If you get an unworkable combination, put one of the cards back and choose again. Use the tables in the digital booklet to look up the endings if you're not sure about whether you got it right. Working with a partner helps a lot, of course, even in a simple game like that. And you can easily turn it into a competition if you're so inclined.